Hello everybody, my name is Bridal and I'm an alumni of NIT Warangal. This session is for post-gate guidance, as you can see. So first of all, I would like to congratulate all the students who have cracked gate this time. So by now, since the gate results is out, you know what is the rank you have got. And somebody will be very happy and somebody will be okay, okay, and somebody will be like uh, not very happy with their efforts, but I would like to congratulate and I would like to wish all of you for your effort, for your hard work, for your persistence and definitely, definitely this hard work will not be a waste, okay? So you should be all also, for, for all of them who has cleared gate, you should be proud of yourself because you are among the 15% of the engineers who has cracked gate, okay? So coming to, uh, let's talk about gate now. now gate it will not be fair for us if we say GATE is an, just an exam, okay? So we can say that GATE has now bec has evolved as a platform. Earlier, the, the only the option through GATE was higher studies. But now, since the PSUs uh, has a attached with GATE, it has become a platform for an engineer to get a job. Also, higher studies. You see the NITs as well as the IITs, everybody has come, all the engineering fraternity has come together and, and GATE has become a platform. So you see, whoever cracks the GATE, there is something for everybody who cracks the GATE. Okay. So let us see the options, the career options that you can pursue after you crack the GATE. So the basic, uh, we can divide it into basic three parts which are First is, you can go to any of the PSUs. Secondly, you can go for higher studies. Third, you can go for research career. Okay. Now, first of all, I would like to discuss about the higher studies. Okay. Now, you see, before I discuss the higher studies, you should know what is the difference between gate score and gate rank. See, gate rank is based upon your gate marks. Now, gate marks is your absolute marks what you score out of 100 whereas gate score is uh, something which is relative that means if you are a topper of your branch then definitely you will have 1000 gate score and the and gradually other students will uh, the, they, they will compare the marks as well as there are some other criteria for calculating the score also so in all in all you can understand that gate score is something which is relative whereas gate marks is absolute uh, whatever marks you get out of 100 and gate rank is calculated out of gate marks now coming to the career options for this gate so you see higher education there are uh, various options for higher studies after you crack gate. So you may go for MTech or ME, you may go for MS, you may go for integrated course which are given by some of the IITs and IICs, management courses by some of the reputed colleges which we will discuss later, also foreign education for, for I mean in Singapore there is a there are some universities which which accept gate as uh, their entrance exam valid score okay they will they will accept this gate score for their uh, uh, for their admission okay first of all let us talk about ms and mtech what is the difference between ms and mtech so you see in mtech it's basically a industrial or it's it's basically job oriented as well as coursework Okay, it's not much research oriented whereas MS is little bit research oriented. That means MTech is, the basic difference is MTech is for two years, MTech or ME is for two years whereas MS is for three years. It will be more than two years. Sometimes in uh, countries outside India they take less than three years but in India you will, it, it will be, definitely it will take uh, more than 2.5 or sometimes it's three years. Okay. So, the coursework and the project works are also divided in a different way in MTech and MS. If you see, there are four semesters for MTech, out of which first two semesters will be coursework and the second two semesters will be project work. 
and whereas for MS, if you go for MS, you will have first semester for coursework, there will be some credits, some sub, some subjects, some topics you will take and there will be a minimum credit which you have to get through and then your project work will start from your second sem and then third sem, fourth sem and gradually fifth sem and sixth sem. So, this is MS is of three years course. Coming back to what, which, which branch should you select, okay? So, as far as electrical engineering is concerned, uh, nowadays power electronics is in high demand, okay? Uh, the development as we all know uh, that is going on for power electronics is very, very high. So, I would suggest that you may go for power electronics and drives and then power systems and after that control and automation and then you can go for electrical machine. This is purely purely based on the, uh, this data is purely based on the rankings and the preference that students select uh, throughout last five years you may say. This is an average five years preferences and the pattern which is followed by the student. Okay, I am not saying that I, and it would be wrong to say that if you take electrical machines which is uh, the fifth reference here, you, you that, that is something wrong. I mean, it's not like that. If you have interest, then definitely you should go for your preferred subject. But if you think uh, about the market, then yes, uh, this should be the preference. Okay. There are some interdisciplinary courses also which is provided by different institutes for example computer science mtech in computer science is provided by isi kolkata energy studies is provided by iit bombay microelectronics and vlsi by iit bombay for electrical engineers these are all the, these are all interdisciplinary courses mtech mtech in this all these courses by different institutes also, you see IIT Delhi provides integrated electronics and circuits as well as communication engineer. Okay. Now, coming back to the colleges, preference of colleges, let us talk about the which college to select and which is the good or which is better or which is comparable. Okay. So, according to the pattern and according to the faculties and according to the placements, taking all those parameters, I may tell you that the best IITs, okay, let us see the preference of the IITs first of all. So, the first IITs will be IIC Bangalore, okay, first choice should be IIC Bangalore, after that IIT Bombay, after that comes IIT Delhi and then IIT Kanpur and IIT Madras, okay. So, after that comes IIT Kharagpur. There, after that also, you may see IIT Guwahati, IIT Rurki, and then the newly oriented IIT BHU. Okay, it was not IIT before, but it was converted to IIT now. And then, so these are all the old IITs. Okay, there are. We will talk about the old IITs later. The preferences of the old, uh, I mean, the preference of newer IITs later. First of all, let us see what is the admission procedure on in this IITs. Okay. First of all, we will talk about IISC. So you see, in IISC, there are two courses through gate. That is, one is ME and one is MTech. So for ME, you will get direct admission. But for that, your rank should be less than 50. Okay, less than 50. So it's tough and those who have uh, got this rank which is less than 50, I congratulate them and I advise them or, or maybe I will suggest them that this is a very very good course. Okay, then you can go for MTech. Uh, for MTech uh, students having rank less than 700 can apply for that. There will be some written exam. After that there will be interview. So, this is little bit uh, tougher process. Now for that written exam, uh, the syllabus is there on the website. You can go and check for the website, uh, the syllabus of the written test. Basically, it will be uh, about mathematics and probability which is a very important 
topic there. So you can check it on the website. Now, there is also a research program or MS program uh, in the IISC through GATE. That also you can apply and if you have an AIR less than 1000, then your probability of getting into that course is high. Now comes, after that comes IIT Bombay or IIT Mumbai. In uh, IIT Mumbai also, there are three different types of courses. Uh, first one is direct admission. So you will get direct admission which is also known as TA. Okay, it's MTech TA. So TA means teaching assistantship and there the, your rank should be around say less than 150. If you are less than 150, you can expect a direct call from IIT Bombay. After that comes the interdisciplinary courses. For that, uh, this is also, I mean, there will be different various uh, uh, courses which are applicable, which you can go to the sites uh, IIT Bombay and you can save. I have named some of the interdisciplinary courses earlier. So you can go and visit and you can book for that, okay. There is one more course uh, which is called MTech and that is RA, okay, Research Assistantship. Now there, now this particular course you see is for three years, okay, whereas the earlier course which I said direct admission for MTech and TA which is for two years, okay, there is a difference. Now this MTech for RA, okay, it will be, you can expect a call from there if your rank is somewhere 1000 to 1500 okay if your rank is some somewhere 1000 to 1500 then they will call you for a written test and then followed by interview okay now comes the third preference of the iit which should be iit delhi if you go to iit delhi uh, similarly you they may uh, they may call you for you may expect a, a direct admission if your gate score or gate rank is less than 150 or something like that or say uh, maximum 2000, uh, 200 rank, okay. So or, or in other words if I say in score, if your gate score is more than 900 then you may expect a call for a direct admission in IIT Delhi. Also they take admissions by interview, okay. So if your gate score is more than 750 then you can expect a call for interview and then they also generate some waiting lists. Uh, where there are chances that uh, some students who have joined earlier, if they leave the seats, then maybe you will be called if you are in the waiting list. Okay, so please make sure you check the waiting list also. IIT Kharagpur also generates uh, uh, two three lists. They will uh, take only interview. Also, they take the direct admission also, uh, and uh, they uh, after that they take some uh, they take interviews also, and they there are many lists for. IIT Kharagpur. That means uh, waiting list 1, waiting list 2 and there are chances that they, it may get clear. IIT Kanpur is, uh, I will say IIT Kanpur will be preferred over IIT Kharagpur but again it's, uh, it, it depends on your choice of stream as well as choice of uh, uh, faculties and choice of place also whether you want to go to Kolkata or whether you want to go to Kanpur. Uh, I mean, you want to go to nearby uh, West Bengal or you want to go to UP. So, having said that, in Kanpur, there is only one list and I have also said about ISI Kolkata. There was uh, a course, you can go for MTech in Computer Science. Okay, You can apply with your valid electrical engineering gate score and you can go to IS, ISI Kolkata which is Indian Statistical Institute there you can do MTech in computer science and the package the average package there after completion of MTech in computer science will be uh, nearly 13 lakhs to uh, I mean minimum 13 lakhs okay so a very good package is offered in that particular college uh, now coming to the new IITs you see the preference of new IITs will be in such order. IIT Hyderabad is doing a very good job. You see, uh, there are very good, good and energetic faculties over there. After that comes IIT Bhubaneswar, then IIT Gandhinagar, 
then IIT Rajasthan, even IIT Rajasthan also have some talented and good faculties, young faculties. Then comes IIT Indore, IIT Mandi, IIT Patna and then IIT Rupa. So these are all new IITs. There are some other good, good institutes also, for example, BHU Banaras, DTU Delhi, which is very good, which has a very good record of placement, DTU Delhi, and then Bits Pilani, also one of the good colleges and has a good placement, then COEP Pune. Okay, so these are all the various institutes. There will also be some institutes, government institutes in your particular states, which you may go through. Okay, there will be some good private engineering colleges in all the states which also if you search in your particular, in your, in your state, you may search and you may find it out, okay? Now, coming to NITs, I may also say that you may prefer some top 2-3 NITs over the new IITs. Now, you see there is a difference, there are, uh, there, every time you may face a confusion whether to go for the new IITs or you go for the better or the uh, or the best NITs. Now it's it, parti it particularly depends on your interest. If you are inclined towards job, then definitely top NITs is, is going to give you job. But if you are inclined towards your uh, brand value, that you want your brand value as a IIT graduate or postgraduate, then you should go for IITs. Uh, since this, these are new IITs, the chances of uh, uh, placements for MTech students is little bit difficult, little bit difficult. But if you go for the best NITs or the top NITs, for example, NIT Trichy, NIT Warangal, NIT Suratkal, there is a very, very good chances, more than 90% chances that you will be placed in one of the good companies, any of the good companies, okay? Now, uh, this NITs conduct a joint uh, um, uh, admission uh, program that is called CCMD. So you have to fill that and through there uh, it's a very organized uh, way of uh, um, I mean admission. All the NITs get together and uh, conduct this uh, this particular uh, um, uh, like commission which is known as CCMD. So you should fill your form there only then you will be eligible for applying into this NITs. Okay. So this is a very very good uh, it's beneficial for the students, it's time saving. Earlier what happened was there was not a single platform, there was different, different, you have to apply for different NITs through different uh, uh, forms, which was very much time taking as well as it was not organized. Maybe you will have interviews for the same NITs or IITs even on the same day, which is very uh, difficult. So nowadays all the NITs come together, also some, uh, some triple IITs are there and uh, uh, some new uh, IIESTs, for example, Shippur University, also some new uni uh, universities are coming and joining this CCMD. Okay, so if you want to see the preference for electrical engineering in this NITs, I would say you may opt for NIT Trichy, after that NIT Warangal, after that NIT Suratkal, then NIT Calicut then NIT Delhi, then NIT Allahabad, after that NIT Raurkila, after that NIT Jamshedpur, after that NIT Durgapur, then NIT Jalandhar, then Raipur, and then Jaipur. After that there is one more college which is Shippur University of uh, Kolkata which is also good enough. Okay, And then comes the triple ITs and all. So, so you may go through the CCMD list and you will find out what all colleges are there uh, which, which you may apply, okay. Now, uh, uh, so these are all the uh, various institutes where you can apply for your higher studies, for example, MTech or MS, okay. Now in this NITs, you can only apply for MTech. This is not for MS or, or any other course. So this uh, NITs are strictly for MTech. Now coming to management course which I have mentioned earlier, uh, there are two very good colleges for management which is NITI Mumbai or, and also IIMs. In IIMs also there are very good uh, courses. So let me talk about uh, 
native Mumbai first. Uh, this is a college in uh, Mumbai and it gives uh, a postgraduate degree in industrial engineering. Okay, postgraduate diploma degree in industrial engineering. And this is a very, very competitive course and very, very lucrative course in terms of placements. You'll have a placements of uh, say 12 to 13 lakhs of package okay so it's it's good enough uh, but you need to have a score of minimum 600 to 650 okay this is a very average score uh, as compared to the last year or and the last two three years uh, it may change year to year okay the proce procedure of uh, uh, I mean, admission in, in Niti Mumbai is uh, you have to apply with your GATE score. Uh, after that, you will get a call from there. Uh, then they will call you for a GD. Uh, following, if you qualify, there will be a PI, personal interview. Uh, now, uh, in this IIMs, there is a particular course which is called FPM, which is Fellow Program of Management. See, so this is a four to five years course. Okay, here uh, the eligibility is BTEC with GATE score. Okay, and uh, eighty-five to ninety percentile is good enough score to get a call from there. You'll get a stipend of twenty-five thousand throughout your course in all the IAMs. Now this particular course FPM is valid for all the IAMs. Okay, so you may uh, go to uh, the websites of the particular IAMs and you can apply for that. Okay, now uh, there is one more opportunity as I have mentioned which is foreign universities. So foreign universities for example there are NTU which is Nine Technological University in Singapore and National University of Singapore, which is NUS. Now, you see, National University of Singapore is a very, very good college, and the ranking all over world ranking of NUS is higher than some of the old IITs also. Okay? And the gate square score you require to get a call from there is uh, more than 90 percentile. Okay? So, these are all the higher studies opportunities that you have through gate. And coming to the PSUs, the PSU recruitments, you may expect a call or, or, uh, or a job in the PSUs if your All India ranking is less than 500. Okay? The mode of recruitment there basically will be through, uh, for example, let us take ONGC. There, they will call you based on, they will have generate a list based upon your GATE score. And if you have a GATE score of more than 700 or uh, 750, you, you may expect a call from uh, ONGC. And after that, they will be taking a PI, uh, personal interview, and then they will make out the final list. Also, there are other uh, uh, PSUs, for example, Visex Steels, okay, Rail India Technical and Economic Services, National Fertilizers Limited, Mazagan Dock Shipyard Building Limited, Hindustan Shipbuilders. So these are uh, some of the uh, PSUs which call through gate score and personal interview. Okay, for electrical engineers. The best PSUs which you can, or, or the order of PSUs which you can expect is uh, Power Grid Corporation, then Bale, then NTPC, then IOCL, then BPCL, HPCL, Gale, and NHPC. Okay? Uh, if you want to get into, uh, if you expect, if you can, you can expect a call from uh, PGCIL if your gate uh, score is. I mean, gate rank or AIR is less than 200. Here, the process will be gate score plus GD plus PI. Okay, all which I have mentioned just now. 
Okay, so this is a little bit difference between these two types of modes of uh, uh, you know uh, recruitment. So Bhel is also very very good, and there you may expect uh, a call if your AIR is less than say 200 or 250. Okay, now this AIR uh, it, it depends on how many uh, how many seats are there, how many. Jobs vacancies are there every year. Okay, so it, it may change. Okay, but uh, definitely you should you have to be in 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 say less than 200. Okay, for PGCIL power grid and bill. Okay, NTPC also it's 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 higher, but it uh, you may expect a call uh, say till 250. Okay, and then IOCL and then BPCL, HPCL similarly. Now coming back to our third option, uh, which is research. See, in research also you may uh, you may go for. When I say research, I mean to say your career will be research oriented. Even the job that you will do will be a some research oriented job. For example, you may go to CSIR, you may go to DRDO, you may go to BAR. So let us see how CSIR takes. So CSIR takes. Uh, JRF, which is uh, Junior Research Fellow, they take it by gate score as well as interviews. Okay, the stipend that you will get over there is 25,000. There are also in CS, CSIR some integrated course that is MTech plus PhD. Okay, whenever, I, uh, in, whenever you see integrated course, it means MTech plus PhD course. There the stipend will be 28,000. DRDO also has a notification for GATE this year and you the, the post that you will get in DRDO will be scientist post okay DRDO also takes JRF through GATE okay and the stipend that they give is 25,000 plus HRA okay house rent allowance. BAHAR gives a very very good opportunity if you get through it okay the there are two programs in BARC, okay, it's a job oriented program, job oriented research uh, organization that is Baba Atomic Research Center, okay, here uh, the two courses are OCES and DGFS, okay, there the stipend will be 35,000, okay, OCES is a orientation course for engineering graduates, Okay, whereas DGFS is a uh, graduate fellowship uh, scheme for engineering graduates. Okay, OCES will be for one year, whereas DGFS will be for two years. And now you need to get a call uh, for BARC interview. The process is they will call, they will shortlist you through the GATE score, and your GATE if your GATE, GATE score is more than 750 or AIR rank is less than say 1200 or 1300, you may expect a call from BAR. Uh, the interview over there is, is tough. Okay, it's really tough. Why tough? Because it's not that they will ask something very practical. They will ask all the basic subjects. For example, they will ask for networks, they will ask for electrical machines, they will ask for power systems, they will ask for control system, they will ask for analog. And all this basics of the subjects if you are very good with the basics then there is a very good chance that you will go, that you will get the job if you are not good with the basics if you have time enough do prepare for the basics and go for the interview so the interview of bark is different from the other interviews uh, in the psus or in other institutes okay so with this with this this research options uh, have been discussed Coming back to NITs, if you see what is the score of the NITs, to get a uh, any of the top uh, NITs with a very good branch, if your score is say more than seven, if your score is more than seven fifty, then you are eligible for any course in any NITs. Okay, uh, there are some NITs, for example. And I did Trichy where you can apply for uh, VLSI. Being an electrical engineer, you can go for VLSI also in in NIT Trichy, which is a very very good course. And uh, there is a separate cutoff for that. 
but your score should be more than 750 okay or or say 700 okay it changes from year to year but the average mark will be, you should be more than 700 okay you want to get into any of the branches in NIT Warangal or NIT Trichy or NIT Suratkal. If you have a score of say 650, then you may get any of the courses in uh, in NIT Warangal or NIT Trichy. In NIT Warangal, there are only two branches for electrical engineering. That is power systems and power electronics. Okay, the power electronics is rated higher in NIT Warangal compared to uh, power systems. Okay. As far as uh, jobs is concerned, okay. Uh, after that, in NIT Trichy also power electronics as well as power power systems is very very good over there, okay. In NIT Suratkal, uh, there is a course which is uh, integrated course for I mean they, 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 there is a three to four courses uh, which is. Uh, which you can apply electrical uh, through gate. You can apply in NIT Suratkal, and the placement in NIT Suratkal is good. Not as good as compared to uh, Trichy, but it's good. It's very good. Okay, and uh, if you go to NIT Calicut, uh, the placements is is there is some placement, but it's not as good as the other three. But it's not bad also. There are options that you may end up. The percentage will be less. So this is all about NITs and the scores of the NITs. And I hope this uh, video helps uh, all the students. And once again, I congratulate all the students for their hard work and their uh, and cracking the gate. For those who could not clear this year, I hope uh, they their hard work is not will not go for waste. I mean, they can prepare again with uh, new uh, energy and best of luck to all of you. Thank you.